take a look here at utilizing the periodic table to do some orbital configurations or diagrams for some metal cations. So first example is going to be for chromium 3 plus. So as we follow the periodic table and fill the electrons properly, first row of the periodic table, um, we fill the first two electrons in the structure in the 1s subshell with its one orbital. And then in the second row of the periodic table, we have both the s and p subshells that we can utilize here. So we're going to completely fill the one orbital in the 2s subshell and the three orbitals in the 2p subshell. Then we move on to the third row of the periodic table where we have the same basic process. We completely fill the electrons in the, both the 3s and 3p subshells. Notice here that the chromium is in the fourth row of the periodic table. So first we fill the 4s subshell, but then something new happens. We introduce the d subshell in that fourth row of the periodic table, and it's specifically the 3d subshell. And so if we follow the structure here for chromium, it would appear that we're going to add four 3d electrons. But here's the deal. And each one of them would occupy, by the way, its own orbital. And there are five orbitals in the 3d subshell. But chromium follows as an atom and anomalous configuration. And it borrows one of those 4s electrons to completely fill all five of the orbitals in the 3d subshell. So as an atom, the 4s, there is just one electron in the 4s subshell, five electrons in the 3d subshell. Now, if chromium becomes the plus three cation, we need to lose the three highest energy electrons to accommodate that. The first electron comes from always the highest number um, shell. So the first electron will come from the 4s subshell. The, remain, the two remaining electrons that we need to lose in order to become the plus three cation, it doesn't really matter which of the electrons in the 3d subshell we choose, but we just need to choose two of them. And the question here is, you know, is the structure then for chromium as a plus three cation paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Where paramagnetic means somewhere we have at least one unpaired electron in my orbital diagram and diamagnetic means all of the electrons are paired. Well, it's pretty clear here that we have three unpaired electrons and therefore the chromium plus three cation would be paramagnetic in its structure. Now we're asked to look, we're asked also to look at making an orbital diagram and determining whether vanadium as a five plus cation uh, is dia or paramagnetic in a similar way to what we did with um, the chromium example. So vanadium is going to be located right here. It's going to follow a very similar, again, atomic configuration as chromium. And just recognize here that we're going to fill up the same subshells in the same order until we reach that 3D subshell. And at that point, we notice that vanadium just has three electrons to place, one of each in one of the five orbitals in the 3D subshell. And now to become the plus five cation, so this is the atomic configuration for vanadium, to become the plus five cation, we first lose the two electrons that come from the highest number 4s subshell, but we still need to lose three more electrons to become the plus five cation. And look at the structure that we're left with then. All of the electrons are paired in the remaining subshells. Therefore, vanadium in a plus five cation form is diamagnetic. Next, we're going to take a look at nickel 2 plus. So nickel is located right here in the periodic table. 
And yeah, you guessed it. A lot of the same pattern that we're going to fall in, follow in making first nickel in its atomic form and then nickel in its plus two cation form. So it too is going to have completely filled subshells all the way up through the 4S subshell. And then when we reach that 3D subshell, we end up needing eight electrons in the 3D subshell. So we start by placing one electron in each of the five orbitals and then start pairing up orbitals until we reach eight electrons. Now in its plus two cation form, nickel again, like the other species before it, is going to lose that highest number 4s subshell before um, doing anything with any of the 3d electrons. So if we were to look at the orbital configuration for nickel 2 plus, notice that we have two unpaired electrons that exist in the 3d subshell and anytime we have unpaired electrons anywhere in the configuration, that species is paramagnetic. So the final example we're going to take a look at is iron 3 plus. It too is located in the fourth row utilizing that 3D subshell. So same pattern we've been following where we completely fill all of the subshells through the 4S subshell. So, so far so good. And when we reach the 3D subshell, notice that iron is going to have I'm going to count them, try to count them this way, two, three, four, five, six electrons that occupy the 3D subshell. So we place the first five in their own separate orbitals, and then we have to pair up one of the orbitals um, in the 3D subshell. Now to make the plus three cation, as always, we remove the 4S subshell electrons first, and then we need to remove one of the electrons from the 3D subshell. So we're going to remove, um, you know, one of uh, these paired electrons to sort of free up the 3D subshell. And the bottom line is that um, I'm still going to have five unpaired electrons in the overall structure. So. Anytime again I have unpaired electrons, the structure is paramagnetic.